All right, next on the agenda, things that actually came out uh, that we heard from the stream. So there's a, uh, what's the ter term for it, Dom? Master levels. There you go. So the thing about master levels, um, the first thing I'm going to say is that there's 30 of them, and it costs 6 million XP per class over 25 classes to do this. And people looked at that number, and some of them were just like, are you serious? This is 150 million experience that we're going to farm. And it's just like, so this is what I... You don't have I'm, to do all of them. You don't have to do all of them at once. Uh, people are focusing on one at a time. Uh, but also, one of the things that I firmly believe they did better this time than compared to the other huge uh, XP sync they gave us with the Eternal Transcendence is that um, the checkpoints are built in such a way that it is way better because every level you're getting something. You always get something when you level as opposed to what, what, what were we complaining about with the Eternals? Dead levels. They just don't do anything. 140 does nothing. One, yeah, one, not just does 140 does nothing, but every level up to there, like you just get a level up notification. Meanwhile, here... With um, you know, with with master levels, you've reached master level four. You now get attack up, and you know it's small, but it's really meaningful to actually have something there, right? Like they, they've they've built with that in mind, so they've they've improved on that design. Good for them. Yeah, and also each of one of those like stat upgrades are will be static across the board, so it's not like you're gonna. It's like it, it piles on somewhere. They're all it, it's all pretty much even on right. the way up. All right. So shall we go through each of these one at a time? Sure. Let's we'll right, start we'll with the. Uh, we'll start with Berserker. All right. So we've got Berserker. Um, Berserker, by the way, this is the other thing about farming up that 150 million experience. Is that we're going to do basically four at a time because tier five classes are coming. They announced them. And they said the requirement to get a tier 5 class is to take the tier 4 or EX2 class that it requires and get to master level 30. So we know two of them in advance, and it's going to be Viking, which is Berserker plus Lumberjack. And we're going to get um, Paladin, which is Cavalier plus Spartan. So those are the first four classes to level, which is why I have a little bit on Berserker already. So double axe and double lance. Mm -hmm. So Berserker. You get attack, you get hit points, you get uh, damage cap up. It's the, uh, the total uh, for all the levels combined is 3,500, no, 3,600 attack, mm -hmm. 1,500 HP, and 10% damage cap. So those are pretty good numbers, especially considering that this is the your base mm -hmm. uh, attack and HP as well. Then there's Trample, which you get at Master Level 20, which is Supplement Your Triple Attack Damage, which I believe is 100k. It's 100k. I watched it. I watched a video on that one. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and then it comes with... The thing is that the Berserker class has this new skill that people kind of ignored for a while. Like, they used it. What is it? Ulfidin? I can't remember how... I don't know how to pronounce it, but the point is... The wolf inside you? It's the wolf inside you, and uh, it guarantees triple attack with Chaser. And when you supplement triple attacks, then your chaser gets bigger. Yup. And so it, it works really well with that. And then the other thing that you get for level 30 is you get enhanced uh, full arsenal, which not just does your, uh, your attack and chain burst damage like it did before, it also gives you CA specs now. 20% CA damage up, 10% cap up. The 10% cap up is the important part there, but it's also a button that you're just pressing all the time anyway. So it's having, a five turn cooldown. Yeah. So even if you're just ulfidinning and not uh, using that that turn, this is a one time, which means it sticks around until you actually do CA. Also, this the icon looks kind of cooler. Yeah, I do like the upgraded icon. But yeah, so that's Berserker. What's next on the list again? In the in the class list. This is Sparta. All right, so Spartan, uh, which is another one that we've uh, like, we we only use this grudgingly now because we spent so long playing this class that we got tired. I could literally go through Blue Sea without this class, to be honest. 
So here's Spartan. Um, the major effects are you get reduced incoming damage. Oh, okay, so defense, hit points, and debuff resistance. All right, so total 3,500 HP. That's a lot, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty percent defense, also pretty significant. Yes. And 20% debuff resist. You don't feel that until you're in the high, higher raids, pretty much. And then just stuff misses you. And you're like, oh, yeah. Like, the, the funniest thing is when you hit Phalanx and the debuff misses you. You're like, why did that miss? And they go, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're 40% debuff resist from Phalanx. Like, it's never the reason that you hit Phalanx. But when it happens, you just go, oh, oh, that was nice. <laughs> so, Rampart is damage reduction to everybody in your team. That's I don't have a number on that, but that's still nice. It's strong. That's always like, nice. It's it's passive. It just always works. And then the enhanced phalanx also gives your team um, guard armored. Yeah, armored. It may, it also makes your icon red instead of blue. I mean, yeah. And so you know that's that's uh that it makes the class better at what it does. Like it's still quite strong. All right. After Spartan is. Sage. I remember the second class that came out for uh, Tier 4. Oh man, I don't have a Sage anymore. Oh, let's just talk about it then. So it's... Alright, so your you're, so you're, uh, your, uh, ma total mastery is 2700 HP, 30% mm -hmm. debuff resist, and 24% healing. And that healing, does it affect the entire party, or is it just your, the healing that you press? Is it, I think it's healing that you press. Yeah. So Panacea does like some pretty big numbers when you do that. Finally, it, I was seeing like six thousand Panaceas or something like that. That's that's kind of wild, oh, wild, man. It's on a short cooldown. It's no monkey or, any, or anything like that. But you know, you shouldn't ever measure anything by monkey. That would just make you sad all the time. You mean so, put monkey in a full heal? Mm -hmm. Either version of monkey. Oh, the other, other version is like ten k, but oh, the water one. I think so. I think it's not. It might... I, I don't remember it being full heal. I thought it was a turn ten full heal. I have. Only oh, you might be right. Let me let me double check. I have to wake you up. Okay. Because I remember that uh, people brought her in on turn ten in order to heal everybody. Oh yeah, you're right. It's a full heal, but it's only a one time uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's um, it just plain happens on turn ten. But the thing is that if somebody dies and brings her in and it's later than turn ten, then it's a full heal. Yeah. Anyway, so um, we got that, and then they do the panacea. Panacea at level thirty turns into the satyr fit heal, where not only does it heal you, but it also reduces debuff durations on you by two, which is nice when it happens. But you know, all right. Well, Sage didn't get that much, but hey, that I that icon is kind of sick. That for, icon's uh, nice for panacea and, thirty, and also the level twenty. Um, the level twenty support skill where you get auto revive at the start of every fight. Oh, my panic! My panic button is now just right there. Mm -hmm. um, it's very simple. It's it. I can see it getting use in the same way that um, Luchador's passive gets used because use, Luchador's passive is actually the one of the big reasons that the five Luchador strategy for Dark works because it's survive at one, right? Yeah, that's survive at one. Um, part of the sequence when you're a blue, uh, you're a blue sea luchador, is you you eat fail you not you eat phosphorus, and you don't die from it because you are a luchador, and specifically because you are a luchador. So there are some things that we can use in the future where you just say your MC dies and comes back. It's just the passive on this class. I don't know where it'll be used, but it it's a thing that you can think about and yeah. You also have to be worried, but you have, you have to worry about uh, fights that have death hallucination. Yeah, that's true. Because you can't auto revive if you're permanently dead. Yeah, death ineluctable. Yeah, yeah. All right. So after that, what's next? After after Sage Warlock. Time to bring Warlock. this class back out. I have a Warlock team somewhere. Let me find it. All right, I'm gonna just talk about the numbers. Forty four hundred attack. Twelve percent skill damage. Twenty percent skill cap. There it is. 20% skill cap, you say. And then uh, the other thing about it... So the thing is that Warlock over time became more of like an auto uh, auto attack class. They tried to take that uh, back a little bit with um, Resounding Chant. Um, 
is resounding chant red? It's a red kill because of his damage. Yeah. As his so, main thing. So here's the new support skill. Any red skill gets its uh, cooldown cut by one. Oh, how about that? Um, so, for example, the new Aether Blast, which gives you a crest. It's a five. It, it's normally a five turn cooldown. It's a four turn cooldown. <laughs> and it, it's a four turn cooldown that gives you a crest as of Warlock level 30. It's and not bad. It goes to all allies. Hey. Crest characters love this. Yeah. They look for crest support things. It's like, wait, dagger main hand, cre grants a crest. Where have we heard this before? Earlier in this show. Altair, you have found your ally. It's the MC. It's a big shocker. Yeah. You just need two more characters like Altair for this to really uh, bear fruit and fire. Um, but yeah, Warlock, um, admittedly cutting the cooldown of Resounding Chant by one isn't really that big of a deal, given that Resounding Chant has a ridiculously long 12 cooldown. 12 turn cooldown. It's 11 when you're a Warlock. Okay, buddy? All right. Yeah, and? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, the skill cap is very welcome because one of the things that sucks about uh, Ether Blast is that like it hits cap so early and then it just never gets better. And its so, cap was 40, 40, uh, 450k. Yeah. And so like you were embarrassed to hit that button. You would just hit Choke or Chaser or Resounding Chant and just move on with your life. Now you have to have a purpose. Yeah. So um, I don't know too many people who have done like Warlock showcases, but I, I like what they did with this one because my biggest problems, hey, Ether Blast does something now. That's important. And yeah, th there, there's going to be some kind of silly way to use um, the red school cool, uh, cooldown cut, even if it's just like shorter cooldown on Arrow Rain. Like one hey, of Arrow the... Rain is a really good skill mm -hmm. and high damage. Yeah, and has a way better cap than Aether Blast. Um, I'm, let's move on. 